Hello and welcome back to the channel. Jonathan Russell here with another episode in my series on how to start a career in acting. Today we're talking about resumes, so keep watching. Resumes are the second part in the trifecta on how to get the call. It's going to be very important for you because this goes on the back of your headshot and gets sent to your casting directors, to your agents, to whomever you're submitting to. This is the other thing that they will look at, so it needs to look great. So let's go through this. What you want to include in your resume, you're going to want to include your name, of course. That's going to go at the very top. You're going to want to include your contact info, such as your phone and email address if you're self-represented. This way, they have a way to contact you. Now, if you are represented by an agent, then you want to put your agency info on there because that's who you're going to want the casting director or filmmaker to contact because the agent's going to negotiate your contract for you, make sure you get the best possible deal out of that. So put that on there as opposed to your own information if you have an agent. You want to list your height, weight, hair color, and eye color. This is really important because a lot of filmmakers, a lot of casting directors, when they're casting a film, they need the actor to be a certain height range or a certain weight range for whatever purpose that is that they're going for. So having that on there makes it much easier for casting to be able to determine whether or not they want to bring you in. Hair color and eye color is not as important nowadays because you have your color headshot and so they can already see that, but it doesn't hurt to have it on there. Union status is important, so putting if you're SAG-AFTRA, if you're SAG-eligible or non-union is really important because if you are SAG, if you are a union actor, you can't work on non-union projects. That's going to be important for filmmakers to know. So if they're casting a project that's non-union, they can't use union actors. So when they get your headshot and resume, they know, oh, he's union, we can't use him. And you're not wasting everybody's time. Now, most of the time, it'll say on the casting call, whether it's union or non-union, so you should know right then if you need to, if you can submit or not. Then you want to list your credits, and credits are showing them the kind of work you've done so they get an idea of your experience. If you're primarily doing film, then you want to list your film and TV credits first. You'll want to put the name of the film, the role that you had, in this case you're going to put if you were a lead actor, your supporting actor, day player, or whatever. You want to put the name of the production company, and if you want you can also include the director name on there, that's going to be important. Now, if you're doing television, you want to list if you're a series regular or a guest star, recurring guest star, whatever the role is, it's going to be a little bit different than film. Now, for theater, it's going to be a bit different. You're going to put the name of the play, you're going to put the role, and the role in this case is the character name. You don't put if you're the lead or you're supporting whatever, you put the name of the character. And then you put the name of the theater, and again, if you want to put the director name, you can. You don't have to but you can if you want. Training, so for training, you'll wanna do anything that you studied. So if you studied acting, which I recommend you do, if you did any stunt training, if you've done voice, dance, accents, any kind of training that relates to the performing arts and acting, you wanna list on there. You'll wanna list the name of the teacher and the school that you studied at, and that's gonna be really, 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 really helpful for them to kind of see what your what your training is so they kind of know, oh, this person studied Meisner at this school, or well, they studied with this teacher, and that kind of just gives them an idea of what kind of background you have. Then you want to put special skills. So this can be anything. It can be sports, any abilities you have, any talents that you've developed, anything that you've got. So, you know, it can be literally anything. It can be you pogo stick. It can be that you, you're really good at yo-yoing. It can be you're really good at wakeboarding. It can be anything that you're good at. You want to list it on there because you never know when the project is being cast where they need an actor who can do a specific skill. And if you have that skill, guess what? You're going to be a prime person they bring in for the audition. So I don't recommend going overboard with all the different skills you have, but anything that's definitely unusual or special, definitely put on there. Here's some important points when it comes to what you put on your resume. You want to keep it neat. You don't want it to be all over the place. You want it to look really, really nice and clear so it's easily read. I recommend listing notable roles first. So if you have different roles, some that are lead roles, some that are not lead roles but are in big name projects, list the ones that will be recognizable first. If you've done commercials, put conflicts available on request. Let me give you an example so you understand what this means. So let's say I did a McDonald's commercial. 
doing that McDonald's commercial, I am locked into a contract for let's say one year. During that one year, I cannot work on any commercials uh, for any companies that rival McDonald's. So I can't do any Burger King commercials or Wendy's or Jack in the Box or Culver's or whatever because they're, they're rivals in that industry. So for that full year, I can't do any of those types of commercials because my face is associated with McDonald's for that time. So I would put conflicts available on request for any commercial work. So if someone's shooting a Burger King commercial and they want to hire me and they say, let's see your conflict, and I say, I'm McDonald's, they go, oh, he, he's still under contract with McDonald's, so we can't use him. So that's really important. And then that's, this is important too because your conflicts are going to constantly be changing. After a year goes by, I will no longer be under contract with McDonald's and I can do Burger King commercial now. So you don't want to list McDonald's on there because then after a year, you're going to have to take that off and put something else on. Plus, if you do a lot of commercials, you're going to be listing a lot of commercials on there and taking up a lot of space that could be used for other things. Very important, do not lie on your resume. There are a lot of stories of people out there who lied on their resume and got caught and they never worked in the industry again. So do not lie on your resume. Don't list extra work. I think this is really important because most casting directors, most filmmakers do not consider being an extra as actual acting work. Literally anybody can be an extra. So I do not recommend listing that because all it says is you did a lot of extra work but don't have any legit acting work under your belt. So keep that in mind. Also, don't list skills that you can't do. If, if you think you can do a skill but you can't, don't list it on there because you may be asked to do it in the audition. But also really important, they, they will expect you to be able to do it and do it well on the shoot. So you need to be able to perform. So don't list skills that you can no longer do or just can't do very well at all. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was informative and helpful. Be sure to comment below with any questions you may have. I will get back to you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with all your acting friends. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, keep living truthfully.